Hey everybody, it's Mike uh, here with a follow-up to my post on Facebook about the governor, Bill Walker, giving me a call today. I was on the roof of the Maquis putting on shingles, which you can see it in the background, when he called. And uh, the other day I talked to Mark Newman about, I had called him, he called me back and we talked for a good while about the PFD cut, the veto of the uh, appropriation uh, of the, the uh, PFD, which is taking half of our um, PFD, the governor's veto. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, I was trying to, we were trying to get uh, legislators to uh, call for a joint session of the House and the Senate to override the veto with, what is it, two-thirds or three-quarters majority? I think it's two-thirds. And uh, Mark said that they didn't have the votes and... Um, uh, anyway, so we had discussed that, and um, well, I kept bringing the conversation back to that, and then at some point he said he was going to give the governor my phone number and have him call me, and I was just sort of like, uh, yeah, sure, okay. I, I really, the last thing I thought was that the governor was going to call me. So anyway, I'm on the roof, I get a call, and they said, hey, it's the governor's office. Uh, the governor was wondering if you had a minute to talk to him, and I was like, yeah, sure. And uh, I started, actually, I started laughing, but uh, <laughs> uh, so the governor got on there and I said, yeah, I didn't expect you to actually call. He, he mentioned that Mark had talked to him and gave him my phone number. So we uh, discussed uh, the weather and um, roofing and he informed me that he was a carpenter. I thought he was an attorney when I looked it up online, but I guess he's a carpenter as well. And, uh, uh, yeah, he was real down to earth, uh, easy guy to talk to. Um, you know, I, I've hardly ever heard the governor. I don't really watch television, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, then he brought up the, the questions I had, and, uh, and you know, I, I just pointed out some of the things that most of you guys have already are aware of, you know. Uh, one, that he's perceived as a bully. Uh, you know, it didn't seem like, he and uh, and uh, his administration were going about taking money from the permanent fund uh, the appropriate way. You know, I thought there was a uh, for one thing. I brought up the the Constitution, the Alaska State Constitution, where it says uh, the money for the PFD will be shall be appropriated. And uh, I've heard people say, you know, that means it needs to happen. It's meant to happen according to the Constitution. Uh, and I uh, also said, hey, you know, it just seems like the people uh, weren't informed. The people weren't addressed uh, or given the chance to really decide how they want this uh, crisis that uh, the legislature has allowed to happen. Uh, along with Governor, not just Governor Walker, of course, but Parnell, you know, the spending like drunken sailors when, you know, people like Rick Rydell, I'll use him as an example because I'd always hear him on, since I moved here, I think, you know, he would harp on, hey, what do we, you know, when the gas prices go or the oil prices drop, it's going to be, we're going to be in a world of hurt. We just keep spending. And, and, you know, Governor Walker said, yeah, every dollar finds a home. Yeah, the more money you give the government, the more they spend. And, uh, you know, I said he really needs to talk to the people about, you know, what he's doing. And uh, he mentioned the fact that, you know, if he didn't get reelected, uh, <laughs> uh, he would go back to being a carpenter. And I thought, well, that's cool, excellent. And um, let's see, what else? Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. It's had a long night. Um, yeah, well, we talked about cuts, and you know, he just the basic stuff you've already heard him say. Uh, oh, I pointed out, uh, I brought up the income tax, which I said, you know, as a libertarian. A registered Republican who's a libertarian, you know, on principle, I'm opposed to any any income tax, and uh, I'd rather give up my personally my PFD in a heartbeat to avoid an income tax. Um, 
not that that's a solution. You know, I, I've been informed and that, you know, I, I didn't have all the information. I, I never thought the governor would, would really call. So I probably should have taken it seriously and wrote down some questions just in case I really thought, you know, I just blew it off. So I did have some important points to make, but then of course there was questions I could have put in a more intelligent way. I could have brought up, you know, uh, Keithley. Is it Brad Keithley? Or I don't remember his name. You know, these economists and the, I think the former professor. You know, I don't remember names. But, you know, they've, they've laid this out. And they've made really good points that uh, I guess the governor really hasn't addressed or answered, you know, his administration, nor has the legislature. So I guess that would be key now is to really press home what these people have said, that the, the things that we're doing are not a solution, they're not going to fix the problem. Oh, yeah, and then we talked about the restructuring of the PFD, and, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I just said I thought, if I remember correctly, I brought up uh, Governor Hammond, Jay Hammond, and I thought there was a process by which, you know, the people would be in charge. According to him, the people, this is the people's money, and then we're in charge. Of course, you know, that's laughable. We're not in charge of anything when it comes down to it, obviously. Uh, and the people, I, you know, I brought up the fact, you know, we, we talked about the, the spending. And, oh, and the other real interesting thing was uh, something that a couple people have pointed out uh, was that, you know, the governor's the bad guy. He's taking the hit. He's taking the heat. He brought that up. They all know what he's doing, and, and a lot of them agree, and I think that's obvious the way Coghill, Senator John Coghill, when uh, Bill Willick, Senator Willikowski uh, brought forward a movement or whatever it's called uh, to ha call for a joint session of the House and the Senate to see if they had the votes to override the governor's vetoes, one veto is of uh, the PFD appropriation uh, and other things that needed to be talked about. You would think that the, the House and the Senate would recognize that as their job. They know that the people are pissed. Uh, Bill Wilikowski understood it. He did the right thing. Uh, I don't know Bill Wilikowski. Um, you know, I just know that that was what I wanted to see happen. I, I, I repeated the Mark Newman many times. You know, well, okay, you don't have the votes. It needs to be, uh, the attempt needs to be made, and then we're going to take down the names of those people who sided with uh, We the People in the defense of the PFD, which is obviously the people's money. And that's the problem here is, you know, Jay Hammond and others have made it clear that this money was not to be controlled by the the government it was the people's money uh, i mean you know if you read the more i learn about it uh the more i, I i'm the more it ticks you off it's like well this is a gross violation of the people's you know the pact with the people on the the pfd you know the agreement that was put in place part of the money was set aside for government to fund government and i think the program uh, called for diversification, which I've been told didn't happen. Um, and of course, with the feds interfering with coal and different things, you know, there's all kinds of angles here. But I did make clear to the governor that he needs to address the fact that he appears to be, and I believe I used both the word bully and dictator. You know, the people perceive, and that includes myself, obviously. Um, you now, I tried to be tactful, and, you know, uh, he's a real easy guy to talk to but you know you can't let the idea that you have access you know because somebody was it was nice that he called but that's not the same as power that's not the same as results as mike alexander who's running for state house and district eight um pointed out to me you know access is the chihuahua begging power is the the rottweiler who's about to rip your you know what off uh well that implies violence and i'm not I'm not implying that, but you know, power means you get something done. There's some teeth in, in what you're, uh, you're not just begging. Oh, please fix this. Please fix the problems that the government created. And a lot of the people aren't engaged. And, and so this is an issue where people, you can walk up to them, and I've done it to numerous people said, Hey, how do you feel about the thousand bucks that's uh, coming out of your PFD this year? You know, and explaining to them numerous people I've talked to didn't even know 
despite the fact that the governor said for a year and a half or however long they've communicated to the people, had town halls. I thought the town halls were where we were telling them what to do. In reality, we were supposed to be figuring out how things were going to be, I think. That's what I, I gathered. I, I was aware that there was town halls and there was testimony given, and, and I thought that we were informing our representative servant government of what we wanted done that we wanted uh, real cuts. We wanted, uh, as Mike Alexander mentioned to me earlier, a freeze in hiring of state employees. Uh, there was a, you know, a bunch of things that people have laid out that haven't happened. The, the real cuts aren't there. You know, according to the other side of the story, the governor says, you know, real cuts have been made and they, they are throwing out a pretty big number. But I guess the bottom line is, uh, uh, according to the governor, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not quoting them verbatim, but we are going to have an income tax because we have to, and we are going to have to restructure the PFD. And, uh, you know, more and more information is coming to light. Obviously, I don't see how the governor could be reelected. Uh, I, I, I think that he's going to lose the next election. And, and uh, uh, one thing I already mentioned was the fact that the senators and some of the legislators are hiding behind let the governor do the dirty work. You know, we've already tried. The people are pissed, you know, and that's what he said to me. They know that they're not going to be able to get reelected if they push this stuff through. So this was a way to make it happen, blame it on the governor. And he said, you know, he was he was willing to do what he thought he had to do, which you can respect him. I, you know, at least on the surface. Yeah, if it really had to be done, nobody else would do it. I'm going to get her done, you know. And I, even if it means lose the next election, you know. And I, I just think there's so much information out there. Uh, I, you know, somebody told me restructuring the PFD was to uh, help get this gas line passed. To use the gas line as, a, I forget the word, collateral or backing you know it's just it's dangerous stuff when this happens so rapidly uh and it wasn't you know the the overspending has been going on for several years and uh so that's not a surprise and you know the people haven't made it clear and listen to the people like i'm gonna use rick rydell because he's the one i know is repeated over and over again i don't listen to that much talk radio anymore but Many times, you know, he's the guy I learned about, you know, because coming from Pennsylvania about 14 years ago, it was all new to me. You know, I things are more established there. Here, it was like, wow, you know, we, you know, we it seemed like we had some say. It's a small state, and but I guess the corruption level is pretty high, according to one study that included us in a list of the 10 most corrupt states in the union. So, uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's some other stuff I'm not thinking of that we discussed. And, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, we're, I'm just letting people know, you know, and hey, it's great to be called by the governor, you know. And, <laughs> but the bottom line is what we're talking about here is uh, people are just going to have to turn out to vote. I mean, in my opinion, the thing to do is to get registered as a Republican, if your your representative is a Republican, really the only way to remove them is to vote in the primary. Normally there's no strong Democrat running out here in the Valley and other locations. But anybody that, that didn't fight tooth and nail, if you look at it and you say, hey, you know what, I don't think you did your job. And, you know, why don't you go back to what you did before? It's nothing personal, but, you know, servant government needs to know who the boss is and that requires the people to be engaged in the vote you have to vote and you have to vote them out and if the next guy comes and he gets down there and he's all warm and fuzzy and uh rubbing elbows and peer pressure overcome can't psychologically handle it folds up isn't a stalwart you know you can recognize people who really are principled and over and over again they'll do the same thing that's why I, I recommend if you're in district 10 vote for david eastman it's time to get new blood david eastman look at his track record i mean this guy at 35 years old he's done more than a lot of people have done their whole lives 
And uh, he has a track record as an activist for liberty and for the people's rights. And I highly recommend if you're in District 10, he's running against Wes Keller. I'm sure he's a fine gentleman. But, you know, if you want to get something done and you want the budget cut and you want put somebody new in and he'll know, hey, the last guy got voted out because he didn't do the job. And uh, and here in District 8, Mike Alexander, he got a late start with his campaign, but it's still important to express yourself. At the, even if we don't win, uh, it sends a message. Believe me, when thousands of people you got, you know, a thousand people voting for the opposition with just a. Uh, a shoestring campaign where he's funding his own campaign and not taking donations. Um, believe me, they'll know in two years if I don't sh demonstrate to the people that I'm really proactive in the defense of their money. And when it comes to an income tax, taxation is theft. You know, to tax the fruits of your labor, that's something you need to look into. You know, you work, that's your money. And, and the, you know, we already have the federal government taking your money. And, uh, well, I won't get into all that. But, you know, if if it happens, everyone should be engaged. Everyone should be informed. You know, of course we want services. And the government's very inefficient compared to the private sector at providing services. So it's something to think about, to get educated on. And in the meantime, if you want your PFD and you want to prosper, you've got to be engaged in the political system where, you know, We've got a couple generations of people who, for whatever reason, you know, I know it's hard when you're raising a family and you're trying to, you know, it takes time, but it doesn't take that much time. Let the activists do the majority of the work. You show up, you get informed with the internet. Um, you really can do just a little research and you'll find out how people voted. And, uh, you know, show up and vote in the primary. Don't wait for the general election because out here, in, especially in the Valley, that's not really relevant. I mean, of course, if you're a Democrat and you want to challenge, uh, that's great. That's part of the the system. And I encourage Democrats to challenge it. Now's the great time, it seems to me, uh, would be, I don't see any Democrats here in the Valley gearing up. And I might not have noticed. You would think that some Democrats would be using this as, as I had pointed out to some other people, campaign fodder. You know, the guy that stands up and is the hero now as a defender, especially an incumbent like Bill Wilikowski. Well, I think, you know, from a campaign point of view, from representing, you know, being able to say, hey, I stood up, I'm the guy that got the job, attempted to do the job, you know, where everybody else either did, appeared to do nothing <laughs> or, uh, you know, didn't even allow this this uh, joint session to be considered, you know, and that looks terrible, Senator Coghill, dastardly to me and to others. It's like what? You, you know, we can't even, yeah, you know. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And it was, yeah, it was real nice. But you know, what's important is uh, relaying to you that, yeah, hey, the governor did reach out, and uh, I did try to communicate very much so the frustration of the people and the shock when they found out that just unilaterally if that's the correct word it appeared that the governor just I just decided I decided we'd take half your PFD and that's how it's going to be and I, I, I do believe I made that clear to them so if I, any questions leave them in the comments comment on Facebook or wherever and uh, God bless Alaska God bless America Oh, and yeah, the other thing I, you know, in retrospect, you know, there wasn't enough time, but I would have liked to brought up other issues that are important. Um, nullification, all that stuff, you know, I don't think that now, you know, I, and that this governor's, but I still wish I would have mentioned, you know, anytime the federal government overreaches, the 10th Amendment is there for a reason. The states can uh, resist, they can refuse to comply. And uh, that ties into the doctrine of the lesser magistrates, the lower courts, the lower representatives, uh, the state government can resist, can refuse. And uh, if enough states uh, stand up to the federal government, you know, then, then we, we're moving in the right direction. We're letting them know we will not cooperate with this unconstitutional law. Uh, 
and a thing that damages our economy in the state of Alaska, the control of the lands here. And, uh, you know, it's all interconnected, so excuse me if I'm, I'm a little bit tired, long night. But, uh, okay, yeah, register to vote today. The 17th is the deadline. I guess you can still register online today and tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. I don't know. I think so. But, yeah, uh, keep up the phone calls and uh, keep up the fight. That's it.